Alright, I just got through playing the six hour prologue demo of Metaphor ReFantasio, and I've been avoiding some vids and content about people's responses until I've played through to the end of the demo to sort of wrap my head around to what I want to say about this game. And it's divided reception, it's gotten prior to getting a chance to play it. I was thinking of saving this for the podcast, but I kind of want to wait on that till after I get the game and beat it. So, first off, I do want to say after playing it, this game is really fun. Stepping away from being a Persona fan, this game, the vision, the art direction, the story, the world, the animations, the characters, the powers, the combat, like, all of this feels fully realized as far as I can tell. This feels like a passion project that was years in the making, and I guess it kind of was. Like, I had heard nothing about this game until me and my friends saw it previewed at the Game Awards, and I was like, this, this, this has got me on board. I don't know what the fuck is going on, but this, this has my attention. Oh, right, the new IP. Wait! This is that Ufo Table? It looks like Ufo Table! That looks like Studio Ufo Studio Ufo Table! This looks like unlimited budget works. Yes! No, it's by the exactly. no, game by like. They're at it again! They're getting some people on board for this one. Yeah. Honestly, I, I am interested. Same here! This is probably gonna be like a PS5 title, honestly, but. I think it's PS5 and Xbox. And then I came out. A five to six hour demo. Like, let that sink in for a second. Like, some of the best games I've played over the years, like that is half the time it takes to beat a number of them. Five to six hours of getting to understand this world, these characters, and it never feels too rushed. I have to say, one of my favorite mechanics was what they did for grinding, because this is something that, I don't care what you say, grinding in a JRPG is tedious. And the only reason it's done is so that you have a boss at the end of a trip with big health and big punch, and you can take them down. And it's incredibly tedious, because you can only go in and out of battle so many times before you just get tired of it. One game I used to play some time ago was Tales of Arise, and because I already knew how the genre works, I'd just be fighting every enemy I come across. And the one comment I got about it was, why are you fighting every enemy? Why are you going to every enemy? I I have I'm I'm no stranger to JRPGs. If I have, if I have a more more enemies that I come across, I will be be under level like dangerously under level when it comes to bosses. So. When I uh, when I got to Balsaf in my playthrough, I was hideously under leveled. Let's be honest, watching that over and over that gets real fucking boring. And playing that over and over, it can get real fucking boring as well. This is something that I think works in metaphor for one reason only. Going into battle is an option that is measured by strength. This game does a great job of telegraphing to the player without saying it really how strong you're getting by making enemies die to like one to two hits with a weapon. You're still grinding, but that feeling of progressing is indeed evident. Revolving around this game, I think one of the biggest news regarding it was that Yoko Taro, the creator of Nier Automata, liked it. And I feel like that alone is just cementing the game to take off already. Because when the price tag is 70 bucks and the guy who's asking for more nudes of the white-haired android with a bubble butt is saying that this game is the shit, that alone will just sell a product. And it deserves it from what I've played. そう、<笑><笑> Let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about what the demo showcased, because there was some stuff in here going into a game made by Atlas I was just not expecting. This game has a body count. Like, actually. Like, yeah, there's the King's Assassination and the Prince's Curse, but 
Then they have the Gallows. You go into the military, dead soldier after dead soldier. The two leads have homes that have been burned to the ground. The kingdom is also another big thing. Beggar after beggar on the streets. Pathways will just have people drunk off their ass and not even moving. It, it's impressive just how depressing they made this world really feel. Like, I don't know if this is a title that would get sequels, or if this is just a one-shot project with Studio Zero as they move on to other ideas. But it looks like there was a fair amount of time really put into making this world feel alive. And much like every company with obsessed fans, this has gotten put down and backlashed for essentially being different. In the last month alone, a lot of stuff has happened around this game, one of which being a big make or break moment for a number of people, being that this game has no romance features and there have been people that were and probably are somewhere between the camps of disappointed to infuriated. I've heard people write this game off like a knockoff to Persona before the demo came out. There were people arguing the actual story around the king being idiotic because the king didn't have an heir, which yeah, that got debunked real quick in game. Like, absolutely just the Konosuba steer meme all the way. Like, as soon as the demo came out, in the same week, now the issue seems no longer to be the romance, but that it's unplayable on the Steam Deck, which is a video I got recommended and just... It, it pretty much felt like it was what I didn't want it to be, which was just arguing about graphics and the frame rate and... Yeah, that's it. I questioned if this might have something to do with the director of Persona leaving the studio to make his own games at Atlas, but I genuinely don't think the average fan of that franchise actually cares about who's making the games. And that's not really anything special, like, because I, I think it's fair to say generally people who like a series don't really care about the people making it, like let's be real. Aside from a company name and whatnot, everything else is just, it just goes to the back of the head. Like, most people when they see DMC5, they just see DMC5 made by Capcom. Who's Hideaki Itsuno? And most people who like Fate, it, it's just Fate by Type Moon. Who the hell's Kinoko Nasu? I don't really think it's something like that, as much as I do think it is essentially clinging to the honeymoon phase. The people I've seen put this game down and whatnot, I'm pretty sure are fans of modern Persona, and if I had to hazard a guess specifically, Persona 5 Royal and Persona 3 Reload. And that obsession, I think, is what's driving a lot of what's been going on, right down to concepts, metaphor tackles, and explorers being ripoffs or knockoffs of Persona. Like, I know the follower system was a big one. I've heard people complain about the UI and compare it to Persona 5. Like, even the game's visual engine feeling way too similar to modern Persona, so on and so forth. Which, everything pretty much, as far as I can tell, either is just defendable or baseless, or it's just flat out incorrect as far as I've seen it. Like, the follower system being just social links, even though that aspect is a life sim and or dating sim aspect you could find in other titles in the past. The user interface feels more renaissance stylized, like, it reminds me a lot of Leonardo da Vinci's famous sketch works in a lot of ways. And the engine... I mean, it's a game engine and Atlas uses it. Catherine and Soul Hackers 2 used it, for example. Hell, if we're going by that logic that because the game has the visual engine, right, that it ultimately feels like a ripoff or of Persona or just a knockoff in some way. I mean, Persona used the same engine for Etrian Odyssey, pretty much. I don't really know if we want to get into this conversation that much. Like, most likely, I'm just gonna say, if you're in this camp of the game is gonna be shit compared to Persona, I honestly 100% believe you're not going to buy it. Let me take a wild guess. You're gonna say the game sucks for days on end, most likely, make others feel bad because they like the game, and then a content creator you like is gonna check out the game, enjoy themselves with it pretty much, they might have a criticism or nitpick here or there, and then you're just gonna take that and then just roll with it anywhere you go where you see people talking about this game. And if you actually do buy it and check it out, I could 100% imagine you realize you actually enjoy it, 
and then praise the hell out of this game. And then another Atlas title comes by that looks interesting, and then you treat it like you treated Metaphor, rinse and repeat. I would not be saying this if I didn't see it happen so many times around me. Personally, I don't give a fuck if you hate or like this game, really. Like, you don't have to really play this game if you think it's not for me or I prefer Persona more over this. Like, that's perfectly fine, and I'm not gonna hold that against you. It's the people who feel like they have to prove themselves to people like me that because they don't like it, it's shit, and just want to be right about that. That I have an issue with. In the meantime, I, I can't wait to see what this game has in store, and to the people getting it or interested in getting it, how do you feel about the game? Let me know.